All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel and to another solar panel video since you liked the last one so much. By the way, if you see a squirrel here in the background, that senior squirrel, He's my friend, he does eat out of my hand, and he comes when I call him. Now, if you haven't seen my prior solar panel videos, I recommend that you go check those out right now. You can see all the things I did right and wrong. So the current state of affairs is that the panels that you see behind me charge my batteries fully about every few days. And then with that amount of charge, they can run one of my interior outlets in my house here for most of the day. That's pretty good, but I think we can do better. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna upgrade the capacity of our system. I figured this time, especially since I'm kind of running out of room here, that I would do a pole mount. So what do we need to do that? Well, first we need the pole itself. This is a four by four by eight foot tall, pressure treated piece of lumber. I've also stained it here to provide a little bit more weatherproofing. This is what I'll be attaching the mount to. Now here I have the panel itself. This is a 200 watt panel. You can see the size difference between these two. These are 100 watt panels. This is a 200 watt pa panel. The other thing that's different about this is that it is a half cut panel, meaning that if half of it is in the shade, then it'll still produce output, unlike these panels. Again, if you don't know what I'm talking about, go check out my other solar panel videos. I explain all about it. And then finally down here, my feet, I have some gravel that I'll put in the hole for the hole here and that'll provide some drainage. What are some of the other tools that I'll be using? Well, a post hole digger here to help me dig the hole. Also, I'll be using this auger here. It's a three inch auger. I think it's supposed to be used for like planting bulbs or something, but I think this will help um, make the hole digging go faster. Also, I need something to hold the pole in place. Normally people would use concrete. I got this stuff, it's called deck post anchor. Um, it looks to be some sort of expanding foam, it's supposed to set in three to five minutes and be as good as concrete. I don't know if it works or not, but we're gonna figure that out. Um, a trowel here, in case I need that. Um, this level right here that's specifically designed for poles or pieces of wood to make sure that's it's level. The pole mount itself, which is a two piece contraption right here. I'll show that more on the pole itself when I install it. And of course we have the charge controller we have some cables here. What else? I think that's a, about all I need. So let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is dig our hole. I've picked a nice out of the way spot in my yard here. It gets pretty good sunlight without the house blocking it. I think this is going to work. Apparently there is a science to digging post holes and that science is as follows. Approximately one third of your posts needs to be buried in the ground for stability on an eight foot post like this, that's about two and a half feet. So that's gonna be the depth of our hole. As far as the length and width of the hole, it's supposed to be three times the diameter if it's circular or three times the width if it's a square like mine is. So on a nominally four inch by four inch post, I say nominally because this is dimensional lumber and it's stupid and it's not quite <clears throat> four inches on each side, but let's pretend it is. So, so four, inches times three is 12 inches. So the width and length of my hole is going to be 12 by 12 by two and a half feet deep. Let's get started. <clears throat> okay, and there we have it. If it's uh, not clear by now, this is artificial turf, but we've got a pretty decent 12 foot, or excuse me, 12 inch by 12 inch square hole. Yep, that'll work. Now time to dig it. I'm gonna go ahead and start with this auger. I don't know how well it's gonna work, but let's give it a try. You just got jammed. Okay, this little method that I've got going on is not too bad. In just a minute or two, I probably got, I don't know, four inches down all around here, three to four inches. I have uh, ways to go, but I'm using this auger here to kind of loosen things up and I'm using the 
post hole digger behind me here to uh, break up some of the roots and to scoop some of the dirt out. So let's keep going. I really should have been wearing my gloves this whole time. These, uh, these tools are kind of hard on your hands. So pro tip, wear gloves. Now, one of the problems here is that I've got some pretty gnarly roots here in this exact location. So I uh, probably need to get another tool to help me clear this out. But having said that, in probably just 10 minutes or so, six inches in some spots, seven inches. So yeah, I've got a pretty decent sized hole already. We're gonna keep going and uh, get down to our two and a half feet. So let's continue. A few moments later. Let's see if we can cut some of these roots to make the digging easier. Okay, so we're doing pretty well. We're about uh, 10 inches down already, cut through some roots. Hopefully there's not too many more roots below this. Need to go change the batteries on my tools here and uh, we'll keep going. <sighs> kind of hot in these rhinos. Rhinos. So I'm um, I'm impressed by the amount of thick roots that are in this little area here. Um, it's been a little bit of a pain to cut through them all, but I'm getting there, especially with this reciprocating saw. So just a little bit more work. I think we're doing good. Uh oh, what's this? Ah, well, there's your problem right there. All right, that's about enough for today. Let's check out the hole. So it's looking pretty good, I think. And how about the depth? Depth. Okay, 15, 16 inches maybe. Yep, 15 inches or so. On this side, 15, 16. So that's about halfway there. Many unbearable hours later. Okie dokie, all done. I don't know how many of you are familiar with digging post holes, but that sucks. Bro, I'm straight up not having a good time. I think the whole process probably took um, five to six hours, but a lot of it was due to these roots that you see here in the background. Um, let's check the depth. This is set to two and a half feet. So yes, all the sides are in fact two and a half feet deep. A lesser man probably would have stopped along the way, but uh, mama didn't raise no quitter. So the next thing to do is to put six inches of gravel down here at the bottom put the post in, fill it with the foam, and then make sure it's level. That should be good. So I'm actually gonna offset the pole a little bit to the left here in the hole because I'm afraid of the panel hitting the fence here so it'll be maybe about here and it looks like we've got the height right i'm six foot so this is a little bit shorter than that which is about what we expected if we dug our hole right and put the right amount of gravel in all right time for the moment of truth so i've got the pole set up in the hole here i've got it level according to this hole level and then I've tied it off with these strings here so that it stays here without me having to hold it. I'm gonna use this stuff so it's fast 2K deck post anchor and it's kind of a two part mixture. You break this, this plastic piece, you mix it together, pour it in and apparently it's just expanding foam. Um, it says I'm gonna to need to use either two to three 
bags of this, so we'll see. I'll try to get a better shot for the camera. All right, let's check out the final product. I gotta say this expanding foam stuff is pretty cool. So it did take me four bags to fill the entire thing. You could see it's a little bit asymmetrical. It's higher on the one side, but that's no problem. I can just trim it tomorrow. Um, I did have to adjust it a little bit as it was setting, but still remained, still remained level, as you can see at the end. So I'm happy with that. So I think this turned out well, all in all. I'm gonna trim this, uh, this excess foam, maybe put a little dirt on top, and then I should be ready to mount the panel itself. Now what I'm gonna do to make it look a little bit nicer is I'm gonna trim this foam. I'm gonna use this oscillating tool right here. I think that's the right tool for the job. And what I'm gonna try to do is, see right here where it's lower, just basically come across here and make it all the same depth, so trim all this away. And it doesn't, it doesn't have to be perfect, but I think I'll put a little bit of dirt on top, try to put the turf back, and that should look pretty good. Okay, so now that the pole is ready and it's fixed into the ground, now it's time to mount the actual panel. What am I gonna use? This is a this is the pull mount right here. It's a Renogy design. I'll link to it in the description. But basically, how it works is that these two U bolts that you see right here attach to the pole. Now I've got this square four x four pole that I'm using, but I've seen people use big diameter PVC and some other things like that. Metal pipe could be also used. So basically, it's going to mount like this to the pole and then I can change the angle. You may ask what the correct angle is. Typically as a rule of thumb, the correct angle for your solar panel is equal to your latitude. So you can just look that up online. This is adjustable. The, the panel will mount sideways here facing this way. And I think that's about it. So now we can see what the mount looks like when it's mounted to the pole. Here's from the side, you can see the U-bolts around the back. One thing I noticed is that you gotta be careful tightening those U-bolts uh, because they can crack the wood. So let's see how good we did. So I was shooting for 40 degrees, that's pretty close there. Okay, so these arms are within a fraction of a degree. Here is supposed to be level, so that's less than one degree. Up here, less than one degree. So, so I'm, I'm level here, here, and then these side angles are what I was looking for. I will say that with this pole mount, um, it helps to have two people. So if you have another set of hands, that's really gonna help you mount this thing. The next step, of course, is to mount the panel itself. It's gonna go sideways, like I said, you'll see in a second. The way that it's held to these rails is with this, I'll call it a bracket, and so it can slide up and down this channel here, and there's four of them total, uh, two for the top, two for the bottom, and that should hold it securely in place. So let's see how that goes. All right, so we've got this thing mounted now. You can see that it was a little bit difficult with just one person, but we got it done. There's a little bit of asymmetry with these brackets, which is part of what was confusing me with leveling, but it's okay. I got the top here level, so that's good. Now I've decided to do something a little bit extra when it comes to securing this thing, just for my peace of mind. So these four brackets that you see here, they're holding it down. Um, it feels pretty tight to be honest with you. Obviously you can't crank it down too much or else you'll crack this frame. So I got these extra bolts to put in here. 
just for an additional safety measure. So we're going to go ahead and, and install those now. Um, I'll show a close up afterwards so you can see what I'm talking about. Well, let's take a look now that everything is set up. <clears throat> so you can see from this top view, the four brackets, two on top, two on the bottom. And then here's what I was talking about a second ago. I added this extra um, nut and bolt right here. Call me paranoid, but um, I'm just worried about these brackets loosening up a little bit and this should keep them in place. So to me, it was worth an extra couple minutes and another dollar or two. So <clears throat> here's the front of it. I faced it this way on purpose so that I could easily access the cables and I'm gonna run the cables this way. So it'll be a shorter run than if I put them over there on that side. And there's the mount from the back. And then from the top, hopefully you can see a little bit, I'm stretching. You can see how the top clamps mount. So you can see that most of the panel is fully lit here, though that one corner is bothering me, especially given my past experience with small bands of shadow on these things. I'm gonna go ahead and test it with my ammeter here. All right, you can see it's basically zeroed out. And how much current am I pulling? Only about 0.6 amps. Let's check the charge controller too, it's to confirm that reading. There it is, 0.6 amps. You blew it! All right, I'm not gonna lie, this is a little bit disappointing. I'm expecting about 10 amps and I'm getting less than one. So this is very reminiscent of the problem that we had with the panels that are on the deck here where they just weren't getting enough sun. And I think it might be that little corner. It must be a little corner that's in the shade um, given our past experience. Um, it's not supposed to happen to this panel because it's supposed to be a half cut panel. So even if half is, is in the shade, you're supposed to be able to get half the power, but maybe because I have it turned on its side, maybe that's causing the problem. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to reorient the panel so that it's vertical instead of horizontal. I think that that's gonna help. That should fix it. If it doesn't, then we'll try something new and we're gonna get it right. You know how I know? Cause we're not gonna stop till we do. All right, take two. You can see that I have remounted it uh, in portrait rather than landscape mode. There is still the shading on the bottom left-hand side there. But if my hypothesis is right, that should just reduce the output, but not eliminate it. So let's check. Okay. Let's check again. Still the same. Well, it just wouldn't be a solar panel video if everything worked correctly. So I think, I think what I'm gonna do is try to, I think the problem is the angle. The angle is optimal for my latitude, but I think it's just too much in the shade. So I'm gonna make it flat. That means I have to readjust the bracket. I'm gonna try that and see if it works because I'm convinced that it's a shading issue yet again. These things are so sensitive. It's really frustrating. So here we are again, new day, new orientation. The panel is totally flat now. I'm not super happy with that because it's not the most efficient angle for collecting the sunlight, but I'm hoping that that will have solved the shadowing issue. So if I can get anywhere near five amps or so, I'll call this one a win. Let's see. All right, fingers crossed, here we go. Three and a half amps. You know, I think that's actually, I think that's pretty good. Clearly we're on the right track here, getting that three and a half amps as opposed to one or less than one. This is making good progress. Part of me wants to end the video right here and be done with it, but before I do, I wanna try one more thing. I wanna to try to prop up the back of the panel to get a better angle. I think I can figure out what the length of that should be, the length of the poles should be to prop it up by using some basic trigonometry. I'm gonna try that and see if that helps.
Okay, this is not the most professional looking installation I've ever seen, but let's be honest, nothing about this channel is professional. So I propped uh, the back end up with some wood there. I can fix it later to make it look nicer if that's what I need to do, but let's check out the reading now. Seven point two six. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Honestly, I was gonna end the video right there, but curse my high standards and potentially mild mental disabilities. I went ahead and I uh, redesigned the mount there. So I've reclamped it in the front and the back there, and then I've I put these uh, metal struts there, aluminum struts. I can probably do better than that in the future, but for right now it's pretty sturdy. It's at a good angle. I'm getting good sunlight. I'm getting good power. Life is good. So there we have it. A couple of stumbles along the way as usual, but another inevitable victory for the Improve and Achieve channel. You're god right. You know, I have to say that between the last set of videos that I did on this topic and this one, I am both surprised and very frustrated at the sensitivity that these panels have to both shading and angle. I'm going to throw up this picture of the shaded panel that I just put up outside and I am blown away that this small amount of shading results in a 90% power reduction. That is crazy talk to me. And I'm also suspicious, by the way, that this panel is indeed a half cut panel because remember, the meaning of a half cut panel is that even if you block half of the panel in shade, the other half should work. It just seems pretty crazy to me that you need near ideal conditions, no trees around, no shading, no clouds for these things to be usable for any practical purposes. But, but I guess we're learning and that's the point of these videos. But in the end, we were able to diagnose the problem pretty quickly, so I guess that's some form of a win. It shows that we're learning at least. I would have to say that based upon all these videos that I've done so far on solar panels that I would warn people away from using them for residential purposes. Unless, of course, you put them on your roof and that's obviously the recommended mounting method and that's the usual mounting method, so fair enough. Or if you have a wide open, completely unshaded field, for example, that you could ground mount the panels to. But aside from those two conditions, if you just have a normal yard like mine, and you're trying to just put some panels up to provide some additional power, do some fun project or something, it is really tough to get good output when even the tiniest bit of shading screws up the entire system. Well, that's going to be it for this video. So as always, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe to the channel. I hope that you learned something and I'll catch you in the next one.